Finally, I have come back to the Joust Restoration Project. And boy, does it feel good. I know it's been a while. I've been traveling for work and other stuff has come up. And uh, yeah, but in this video, this is gonna be part nine of our Joust Restoration series. Uh, hey, check this out uh, real quick. Uh, can you tell what this is? Do you know what, the, what, what this is? So I got this in a parts lot and it looks a lot like a, a typical Williams power supply that you might find in a Joust or a Robotron. But notice this, it's got this weird sort of uh, diamond shaped heat sink uh, around a bridge rectifier in a sort of different um, case. It looks more like a bottle cap transistor. And if you look right here, there's a, a date stamp here that says uh, January 26, 1987. Um, so this is a bit strange. And here's the corresponding heat sink uh, that goes with it. And if you can tell here more clearly here, by this model number, 3035, this is actually the heat sink, or the heat sink and the power supply from a Joust 2, okay, which had a, a power supply a little bit different than the typical Joust and Robotron. So this is a Joust 2 heat sink that I kind of randomly got in a part slot that I recently picked up. I'm actually working out a trade with Williams expert Brad Raydell so that he can put this into his Joust 2. Uh, I don't think I'm ever gonna have a Joust 2. I don't actually think it's that great of a game. Joust is much better, the original Joust. Uh, but he's gonna send me, I think, something to put in my Moon Patrol or maybe my uh, the, the sort of second Robotron uh, restoration project I have out in the garage. But this video is not about Joust 2. This video is about the original Joust, Joust 1, or just Joust, uh, that I'm currently restoring. And so yeah, this video is part nine, and what we're gonna do in this video is uh, work on the cabinet. We've got some cabinet repair work to do. Uh, we've got to apply some wood hardener to the bottom of the cabinet where it's a bit chewed up on the sides and the front, sort of squeeze that back into shape. Uh, and then we're going to be doing bondo and sanding and bondo and sanding, uh, rinse and repeat uh, to get ready uh, for not in this video, but in a future video, we'll do some touch-up paint uh, at the bottom of the cabinet. So uh, yeah, I'm really excited to do this. I wanna get back onto this project and wrap it up as quick as possible. And the end is in sight. So why don't we head out to the garage, get started on that cabinet repair and take it from there. Let's go! Overtime! All right, and we're back out in the garage. Time to work on the joust some more, and uh, boy, does this feel good. So what I wanna do in this video for now is uh, take care of the bottom uh, sides of the cabinet. They're a bit chewed up. I wanna put some wood hardener in them and uh, clamp them down and get them back to, uh, to ship shape. Uh, before I do that, there's a couple of things I wanna kinda of, you know, continue the disassembly. I'm gonna take the speaker panel uh, off. That'll give me better access to uh, fixing the marquee light and putting the new speaker in and the new uh, replacement speaker grill because this one's blown out. I also want to remove uh, the lower coin door uh, so that I can get that cleaned up. Uh, we are going to repair uh, this hole here that was added for a, uh, a credit button and there's um, two uh, additional holes uh, here that I want to fill and repair. Those were, I'm assuming, from some sort of lock bar. Um, I do have dowling to fix uh, this hole but I need to buy some uh, for those two, so uh, I'll have to uh, pick that up tomorrow. Um, so you know, let's just take a, a review again of the sides here. This is the better of the two sides. Paint's pretty much intact. There are some scrapes and dings, especially right here. Um, but all in all, you know, not bad. This other side, however, is definitely the uh, the worst of the two sides. There's a bit of uh, planking. Um, I guess you would call it sort of the the wood. Um, you know, kind of separating a little bit. Lots of lifting and flaking uh, of the paint, some scratches over here. It does continue down uh, quite a bit, some damage on the back there. You know, the, the stencil is intact, so uh, I'm definitely not going to completely redo it. I'm not exactly sure what I wanna do sort of here. Um, you know, part of me is thinking, do I just sort of clear coat it and live with this patina uh, and, and, you know, call it a day in these battle scars? Do I try to touch up all this stuff? Uh, I really don't know. So, um, you know, let me know what you think. Leave me a comment down below and uh, tell me what you think uh, I should do or what you would do in this situation. So let's get the uh, tripod set up. So let's take apart some of this stuff here. 
I should just be able to come through with my uh, screwdriver with a nut driver. And uh, first there's actually um, a ground strap that I want to remove uh, that goes to the speaker. Uh, there we go. Pull that, disconnect that, and I'll actually just stick, stick this right back in so we don't lose the screw or our reminder that we need to reconnect it. And then these should come right out. There's one. Two over on this side. Three. Four. I'm going to put these down while I. Um, so now there's only one screw left on each side. I don't think there's anything else connecting this. So there's one. And I'm going to hold this here. Two. There we go. So now our speaker panel has been removed. We can put in our new speaker in and replace this uh, trashed um, speaker grill. So that's good. Put that off to the side for now. And uh, yeah, that'll give us more access to what's going on here. And um, why don't I go and um, let's see, cut out this um, light bulb attachment thingamajig. Uh, give myself some slack here because we'll tie into the existing cabling wiring there. Okay, and there's this wire here. Man, I don't know what they were thinking with this, you know, some kind of, uh, you know, the bulb went out or whatever, and instead of replacing it, they decided they would, you know, uh, put in a regular incandescent bulb socket. So there's that. Look at that. It's just duct tape or um, electrical tape together. What a joke. And these operator hacks, you know, definitely MacGyvering things back in the day. So we still have our socket for the, um, oh, and that's just a, that screw doesn't belong there. Actually, you know what? You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna put that right back in. That might be what we use to hold our, uh, no, those aren't even right. Anyway, let's just put this in. This is where our uh, ballast goes, and this is the socket for the um, starter, and obviously the two ends for the fluorescent light. I think we'll have to replace this black wire here, figure out what's supposed to go on there. We'll get that all sorted out. So next I want to remove the uh, lower coin door. So let me adjust the uh, tripod for that. All right, I've got a 716 socket and I should be able to use this to remove the nuts holding the carriage bolts in place. Oh, do those want to spin? Okay, here we go. Of course, I drop it Well, there's one. And let me uh, do the rest of these. All right. That's four. I guess uh, are two of these missing? Yeah, we'll have to... Uh, place them somehow, and these other two uh, will have to come in this way. Uh, they've got, got tight quarters in here. Man, how am I gonna get this one?
All right, I got that one free. And there's this um, catch here. I guess this holds the, uh, the coin bucket in place. And this is, now this doesn't want to come off. What is going on? There we go. Oh my goodness. Okay. All right. One more. Goodness gracious. And we'll just come in here with this top one. I guess I can probably close the close the vault door just to help. There we go. Here comes the last one, nice and easy. All right. Oh, that wasn't so bad. I struggled with it for a little bit, but we got it off. It's nice that nothing's rusty. I had just taken the uh, whole transformer assembly and power supply plate out of the uh, the Moon Patrol, and boy, was that rusty. I've been working with Brad Raydell to maybe find uh, a power supply for it. So, uh, okay, so that'll make it a little bit easier to uh, paint. Eventually, we're going to repaint the, the front uh, plate when we fill these, these holes. And you know what I can do is I should be able to just pull this out. This is the, this is a, uh, some kind of, um, T-nut. They must have screwed, screwed, uh, a bolt into this. I don't want to really blow out the hole, but I do need to get it out. Oof, that's a bit ugly, but uh, we'll get that back. Good as new. Okay, so uh, I think that's good for now. Uh, so what I want to do is lay this thing on its back so we can get uh, working on the base of the cabinet. All right, I actually had the whole thing up on the sawhorses to get working. And then I remembered there was something I found earlier. So if you recall, when we were first uh, looking at this project, uh, the width wasn't consistent, right? It was the right width at the bottom of the cabinet and the right width at the top of the cabinet. But the width of the control panel was like a half an inch or a quarter of an inch off. off. And then I found this. It's sort of been, the cabinet's been knocked out of its uh, alignment here. Uh, so yeah, I want to uh, see if I can knock this back into place without destroying the whole cabinet. It's not so bad up here. Uh, it's really just right there. Like up here seems uh, pretty okay. So uh, yeah, I want to see if I can address that. So and I don't want to destroy the entire cabinet in the process. So uh, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the uh, plastic bezel. Uh, right here because I don't want this to get broken while we're essentially flexing the cabinet. Okay. All right. Well, how is this supposed to come out? And this is loose. That's not good. This, yeah, this got knocked out of its sort of uh, spot right there. So we'll have to uh, see if we can do something about that. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah, how is this? 
Oh no. <laughs> How do you get this thing out? Without busting anything. What in the heck? See, I need this out of the way to really kind of have some room to work here. Is it flexible enough to kind of just... Yeah, okay. I don't think I cracked it, so that's good. Oh boy, yeah, we're uh, out of place here. We're certainly, certainly loose. I don't know if I can get some, some glue in there or something to hold it together. Interesting. And is this, this isn't, there's a couple of nails there that are kind of just hanging out. I don't know if I can get in there with my side cutters. Yeah. Oh, but these aren't. There we go. That's one. I don't know if this was like this from the factory, maybe? Wild. All right, uh, huh. All right, huh. So I, I think it's loose and uh, man, I'm kind of cracking, not much, but just a little bit to try to knock it into place. Uh, and I'm trying to debate on what I should do. So I really don't have a clamp uh, wide enough to hold this in place here. Uh, I wonder if I could use like uh, ratchet straps. Um, that might be the way to go. All right, I grabbed a couple of ratchet straps and some wood glue. I don't really want to put nail holes uh, through this. So uh, hopefully I can just get this with some a healthy amount of wood glue. Um, so it's kind of Fill that in there. And if we have to clean it later, we will. Don't want to make a huge mess, but. Okay, it looks good there. And we'll do a little bit up here. I don't know how to get it really into this. Push it in there. I don't know. I don't know if that's going to go in there. But uh, hopefully that's a good amount. We're going to have to clean up this mess. Okay. Now I kind of got to pry the thing apart to sort of work it in position. So I'm just going to use my elbows to kind of open it up and just work this into the correct slot. Okay. That's probably what it's going to look like. And then up here, again, just a little bit of glue holding that, holding that together. Okay. Yeah, we got some excess glue. That's not so bad though. Oh, yeah, I was kind of, you know, like I was confused by that when we first saw it, right? If you remember that in early video. And uh, I guess we found the culprit. And I really can't tell if it came like this from the factory or what. So let's come in here with our ratchet straps and find a good way tie these down without, you know, severely scratching the cabinet. 
I want most of the force down here. So oh, come on, come on. Let's see if we can tighten this down. Yeah, I can see it coming together. All right, that's about as good as I want that. And uh, maybe one around the front. Yeah, that's in there. That's in there. We got more glue dripping down. Okay. So hopefully that helps stabilize things a bit. Right, let's come here with these. All right, I think, I think that's gonna do it. And like I said, hopefully that glue helps set that in place. I might be able to throw some screws or something in there to kind of add to it, but I don't really want to do anything that's going to show on the outside. But man, that was uh, odd that I caught that. So, uh, cool. I think now we can lay it back on its back. All right, and looking at this again, it's actually not that bad. Um, you know, obviously, we've got some blown out stuff here um, and some material missing here. It's actually the worst sort of in the front. Um, so I want to knock out the, uh, the loose stuff, um, get as much of that out as I can, uh, and then we will uh, bring in wood hardener. Uh, I think squeeze this back in with clamps. Yeah, it's really not that bad except for here. Um, I still think I need to, to do this though. So uh, let me see what I got for a brush to knock stuff loose. All right. Uh, the only brush I can find again is the, uh, the snow scraper. So that's what we're going to do. And I'm just coming in here and making sure that any really loose stuff we knock loose to knock away. You can be a little vigorous with it. All right, that's not too bad. Uh, I'm gonna go find some uh, wood uh, that I can use for blocking to hold the clamps uh, or use to, to squeeze the wood with the clamps. All right, I think I'm ready. I uh, have a ton of these uh, Irwin quick grip uh, clamps. I've always had a few and I just bought uh, several more. I got them on sale. Uh, and this is the Minwax wood hardener that I'm going to use. We're just gonna let this soak in and then clamp it down. And, um, you know, so I've got these scrap pieces of wood, um, but the wood hardener can be sticky, right? So I've wrapped uh, the, the, uh, the blocks, the wood blocks in uh, non-stick aluminum foil. You can also use wax paper, but uh, I've got non-stick aluminum foil and the, um, the dull side is the non-stick side. The shiny side is not the non-stick side. And I've got some uh, cardboard on the floor to kind of soak up any of the mess because this stuff is a, can be a bit nasty. So let's open it up. Uh, I got to squeeze. There we go. And it's got a plug. I know I've got an older bottle of the wood hardener somewhere, but I'm not entirely sure where it is. Okay. So let's let this soak in. Kind of 
kind of let it run down. And it's going to soak into the wood fibers, penetrate through, and uh, give us a much better foundation for our bondo, which will fill in a bunch of this, and then we can sand it down nice and smooth. And I guess the way this wood hardener works is it's kind of like um, the glue or the material they use to you know, make plywood to fuse all the different layers together. And we're just using it to kind of re-harden this stuff. So just get it nice and in there. I might have to find my old uh, bottle to really get both sides nice and, or all three sides nice and soaked. Is this really like wicks into, wicks into the wood. All right. And I pulled off the, uh, I unscrewed the, um, uh, the leg levelers and uh, Dell from Delusionals Arcade on YouTube, he left me a comment said, you know, you probably should have waited until you repaired the bottom to really put these leg levelers in permanently. And it's probably right, but hindsight is 2020. So I think that's looking pretty good. We're nice and nice and soaked. I'm just worried about the top having enough. All right, that's probably good put this off to the side and then I'm going to start clamping it down. I'm going to sort of hold it in place with just this for a second. Uh, and I've got really both sides that I want to sort of clamp in place. Let's see how I'm going to do this. Ooh, that's, those vapors are not fun, so be sure to do this in a nice ventilated place. There's one sort of holding it down for now, and another one over here. We can really, really squeeze this to kind of reform the material the way we want it to be. I've got tons of these clamps, so I'm not worried about running out of them. How's that looking? All right, I'm uh, actually pretty happy with that. So uh, we're gonna leave that for now. We'll, I'll leave it to dry overnight. I'm gonna go do the, uh, the other two sides and then I'll come back and show you what it looks like. All right, all set. I've got all three sides, uh, the two, you know, left and right and the front uh, soaked in wood hardener. And then I've got these uh, scrap pieces of wood wrapped in nonstick aluminum foil with clamps, sort of really squeezing everything back into shape. So I think we should be pretty good here. Uh, I'm going to let this dry overnight. It should only take like four hours or so, but to be on the safe side, I'm going to let it go overnight. I had, uh, you know, sort of a harder time getting everything to soak in the front, and you can see a bunch sort of dripped on the underside of the cabinet. That'll end up looking a little bit shiny, uh, but you'll never see it, so not really worried about that. Uh, it did run a little bit. 
on the, the top. Um, again, that's no problem. It did sort of strip the paint a little bit. Not really worried about that since we're going to be uh, repainting the whole front black uh, kick plate or a front plate uh, because we have to fill those uh, holes there. So uh, yeah, and I used a couple of these kind of just uh, spring-loaded uh, clamps here in addition to all of these Irwin uh, quick grip clamps. So uh, yeah, let's uh, let that dry overnight and we'll come back tomorrow and see what we got. All right, it's the next morning, everything's dry, so let's go and take all these clamps off and uh, see what we got. All right, looks like the, uh, even the non-stick aluminum foil, uh, unfortunately, stuck a little bit to the wood hardener, so maybe in the future I'll use Ooh, wax paper. Um, huh. All right. All right. Not so bad on the sides, but on the front, it's stuck a good amount. I got this whole piece flaking off that I think I'm just going to, unfortunately, remove. So, all right. Okay. So that's that. Uh, let's come in and take a look. And if you recall how you know, expanded this wood had been before. Still not perfect, but definitely a, a whole lot better than it was. So uh, now we can get some Bondo mixed up and fill in all these gaps and then sand it down to make it nice and smooth. All right, let's mix up some Bondo, and I'm still using the old can with the ugh, with the red cream hardener. All right, grab a uh, paint can opening key. You know, and this is. I don't mind doing this, but this is far from the most exciting part for me. And this stuff has gotten a bit hard. And it's like, it is really, really hard in here. I don't know if it's too cold. It's, is it 45 degrees in the garage, but and this is almost like too cold to work with. Let me try my new can. This has the blue hardener. Let's see if this is uh, any better. It should be a bit thinner. Yeah, like this just flows. All right, I can just pour this out. All right, maybe I don't want to. Yeah, so I'm going to throw away this old can of Bondo, sadly. But, uh, yeah, gross. Oh, well. Let's see, can I just pour this out? It's kind of moving like ketchup. Put that lid back on. Put the cap on temporarily. And uh, let's do the blue stuff. You know, that just seems weird to me. That seems wrong. You know, Bondo is supposed to be pink, not blue, but 
Let's see what it looks like when we put some blue hardener in. Yeah, it should be more than enough. And the ratio you're supposed to use is um, for a golf ball size amount of putty, you're supposed to use a pea sized amount of the cream hardener. So what color is this gonna turn if the old stuff turned pink, like a salmon color, this goes from gray to blue? That doesn't make any sense. Like, like what about colorblind people? Are they gonna be able to see when it's been mixed appropriately? Okay, and I'm using this uh, sort of putty palette, this Bondo palette and the Bondo spreader, but you can use cardboard and whatever to, uh, to work with it. Yep, still seeing some of the blue cream hardener in here. Okay. All right, so that should be good. Let's take a look back at the cabinet here. Maybe we'll work on this side to start. You want to work sort of quickly because this stuff will start to set, but you do have some time. And you know, often it looks like a huge mess when you're first putting it on, but you can always come back, sand it down, and get it looking nice and good. And you also don't have to do it all in one, one pass, right? You can, uh, build it up with multiple coats, which is, I think, what you're kind of supposed to do. But I wanna come in here and kind of fill the gaps that we've got. I don't really want to uh, fill the, um, the slot for the T molding, but it's not a big deal if we do that. We can always recut that groove, recut that slot, the router. So I'm just trying to work the Bondo into these gaps. And it's gonna look terrible while we're doing it, but we'll come back and sand it and then repaint the bottom here. You wanna be generous when you're putting it on so that you can push it into where it needs to go and you can always sand all of this off, but you don't want to just leave a ton of excess material because then you'll be sanding forever. So this is going on pretty good. Might need to build up this corner a bit. And I might need multiple passes back here. I'm thinking multiple applications.
All right, that's probably good for the first application on that side. So let's come up and see if uh, I can show you what I'm doing up on the top. We'll use the rest of this batch up on top here. All right, let me go whip up another batch of this stuff. All right, let's come here with some more. Yeah, this blue, blue Bondo just seems wrong to me. What would our what would our forefathers think? They saw us using this. And I'm gonna have to do multiple applications on the, the front here to get a nice sharp edge or as sharp as I can. And you know, this, this stuff is not going to be weight bearing, right? The cabinet's not going to sit on the, the edges. It's going to sit on the leg levelers. So it's okay that, you know, you don't necessarily want to use Bondo for any weight bearing uh, stuff. So it's strong, but it's not, you know. All right, I think I'm gonna let that dry uh, before putting on our second application, but it's looking kind of okay. Definitely a mess, but uh, the uh, end result should be pretty good. So let me come right back. All right, quick update. I put another coat, another application of the Bondo on the cabinet. I got some scrap uh, pieces of Plexi here that I actually um, temporarily screwed, if you can see that here, uh, to the inside of the, of the cabinet. And uh, that helped me kind of fill it out where I needed to and, and get a sharper edge. And I don't think the Bondo should stick to the acrylic uh, plexiglass. So this side is looking pretty good. Uh, the top's looking okay, definitely a lot messier. So we'll do quite a bit of sanding here. Uh, the left side of the cabinet, I don't know, definitely still looks like a mess. You can see this, um, nowhere near as sharp or smooth as the other side. And this one needed uh, more work. So, um, especially down here, I don't know if I really kind of got all, enough material down there, but anyway, I got a lot of sanding to do. And I think, uh, we'll kind of reassess after I sand all of this mess off and see if we need to, uh, yeah, put another application on this side, but so far so good. I did grab some more doweling, but I got the wrong size. I thought these were half inch holes, but they're actually three eighths. Uh, I could drill them out to half an inch and put the half inch doweling in, but I don't really want to do that. I'll just run out in the morning and uh, grab some more, uh, grab some three, three eighths inch doweling and we'll repair that uh, tomorrow. So we'll let this dry and uh, take a look at what we got tomorrow. Okay, next morning, everything's dry. I can come in here and remove the uh, blocking and the uh, plexi that I have. Let's create this edge. And hopefully it comes right off.
There we go. <laughs> nice sharp edge right there. Maybe I should have done it on the uh, outside, but I had to do it on the inside because I was building up the inside a little bit. Obviously, we need to do a whole bunch of sanding. And I've actually got the, um, uh, the cabinet on the uh, AV cart. So I can wheel it while it's on its back. Works pretty good. Balances easily. Yeah, let's see. Look at that. Sharp, sharp, sharp. Yeah, this side is really looking nice. You know, top is a bit of a mess. This side over here definitely messy, but uh, we'll we'll take a look at it once we sand it. Uh, I did. Let me show you this. I did get the dowel doweling that I need to plug these holes in the cabinet. Um, I've already cut them down to size. So the, the cabinet uh, face is three quarters of an inch uh, deep. Uh, I have uh, a wooden dowel that's three eighths of an inch to plug the lock bar holes and an inch and a quarter to plug the uh, buttonhole. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, and uh, we'll use you know, obviously these dowels and some wood glue. I'm just gonna put, let's see, will that drip if I do it like this? Because I wanna get a little bit in the hole. Kind of put it around the side there and uh, get some on the dowel plug itself. Wipe it around. And put it in there. I really don't have a way to grab it from the back, so be careful not to push it in too far. All right. That's pretty good. We can fill the rest with Bondo once the glue dries. Let's do this other one, which is a bit of a messier hole. Again, I don't really want it dripping, and it already is. All right, I'll just work a bit quickly here. And when I work with wood glue, I end up getting it all over my hands, but it's not the end of the world. All right, that's pretty good. And this last one, big old buttonhole, uh, we'll go like this. I'm gonna put some on the inside. Not too much, because I don't really want it just dripping everywhere. And then we'll load up the plug. Like I said, once the glue dries, we'll bondo over the plugs. If I get them nice and smooth. And then I think tomorrow, tomorrow's Sunday, hopefully the weather is nice enough for me to sand all of this mess off. This one's a bit snugger, or more snug. Maybe I'll get my rubber mallet and kind of lightly, lightly tap this in. Needs a little bit more. It's maybe deeper than I really want it, but I don't know if I can get that back out. Hmm. Oh, 
well, that's not the end of the world. We'll uh, sort all that out with a skim coat of Bondo. So I'm gonna let this wood glue dry, clean off the face of my mallet. We'll let this wood glue dry with these plugs. And uh, yeah, I think tomorrow we'll come in, well, in a, in a, I don't know, what does it say? Uh, we'll give this at least, I don't know, half an hour, an hour. For the wood glue to dry, I'll come in with Bondo. We'll skim coat the Bondo, let all that dry until the next day, and then we'll sand the heck out of all of this. So stay tuned. All right, I had meant to get started with the Bondo sanding uh, actually a couple of days ago, uh, but then it started snowing, the most snow we had gotten all winter, uh, so I didn't want to sand in the snow. Uh, and then I had to go out of town on a, on a work trip, but now I'm back and uh, weather's much nicer today. It's, it's cold and super windy, but that's actually great for sanding. Uh, I've got the dead cat on the microphone, so hopefully you'll be able to hear me okay. And hopefully the wind doesn't knock the uh, camera around uh, too much, but I can always try to fix that in post with image stabilization. Before I come in with the, uh, the orbital sander, I'm actually gonna use this, this tool right here I believe this is called a surform. This is maybe the technical term for it. Yeah, Stanley surform. Basically, it's like a cheese grater, right? And you can come in and, and use this to kind of knock down some of the high points on the Bondo. So I'm just gonna come in and do that. This side doesn't really need uh, too much. All right, not, I don't know if you saw that, but the wind uh, knocked over the tripod. I was able to catch it before it destroyed my phone, but uh, I've oriented a little bit differently here, so hopefully we'll have some better luck. But uh, yeah, so I'm just coming in with the surf form and, and sort of knocking down the, the high points. This side really doesn't need it all that much, maybe on the maybe on this side. And I want to be careful not to touch any wood with this tool, which again sort of works like a cheese grater. You see how this is going. This will give us just sort of less sanding that we have to do when we bust out the orbital sander. And it really just sort of, like I said, acts as a cheese grater. Taking off a lot of material. And boy, this wind. All right. Come here, this. Top. And they make these in different sizes and I maybe could have even gotten away with a, using a larger one here, but this is the only one I have. But you can see all the material it's taken off. And eventually these blades dull and they sell replacements for them. And sometimes people I've seen just use the blade without the holder, but then you have to like hold it like this. And I don't know, I feel like it works better with the holder. Yes, yeah, it's kind of like a, a rasp too. So maybe surf form is the the name that Stanley uses. And we're certainly gonna have a, a ton of sanding to do, but this tool can help knock down some of that work. Oh yeah, lots of sanding. So I'm gonna do a bit of this and I'll come back and uh, show you how I'm getting along with the, uh, the sander. All right, the wind keeps knocking over my tripod and I didn't catch it on the last time, so hopefully nothing's busted here, but I think we're okay. So yeah, finished with the surf form and knocked down as much as I could, you know, 
certainly not perfect. We got a lot of uh, sanding left to do. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna do that off camera so that I don't lose this uh, tripod again. I don't know if the uh, gimbal's acting a bit wonky because everything went crashing down. So uh, yeah, let me uh, go do some sanding. I'll mask up to prevent myself from breathing in Bondo dust and uh, I'll come back and show you what we got. All right, here's where I'm at. On this side, it's actually not too bad. Uh, I've only done the 80 so far, and uh, I'm definitely gonna have to come in with a, ooh, with a, a second uh, application really to kind of fill out the, the face of this edge, but uh, pretty happy with how the bottom sort of got uh, filled out. Uh, up on top, uh, the holes I filled in pretty good. Uh, I was careful not to go into where the uh, serial number is uh, etched in or, or stamped uh, into the face. Um, you know, this will clean up nicely once I hit it with the, uh, what is it, the, the 220? Yeah, for the, the fine work down here, right? Um, but over here I actually ran into some, an issue with uh, delamination. So the, the sort of veneer layer of this plywood is kind of, sort of coming off. So took a bunch of it off. I'm gonna probably take a little bit more See if I can get some wood glue or something in there to kind of really hold it down. And uh, you know, anything loose I need to take off. I was worried about this happening before. You know, obviously you need a uh, a good solid uh, a good solid foundation for the bondo to attach. And this you can sort of see it flexing up and down here, uh, and a little bit over here too. So might end up having to take off a couple of inches, not of all the wood, but just of the sort of veneer face of it. Uh, similarly, similar, similarly on this side, a uh, little bit of it here uh, kind of separated, uh, but the rest of it's uh, not bad. And, and you see I'm kind of sanding into, uh, through the paint a little bit, burning through the paint, but that's fine because this will get covered up eventually. And again, I'm gonna rebondo over all of this. So uh, yeah, we've got some more bondo work to do, but definitely making progress as ugly as it looks. This is what the process looks like. This is what progress looks like. So yeah, uh, definitely gonna have to do a, another Bondo application and then sand it down some more. Um, but uh, that'll have to wait for tomorrow and I wanna get this video out. So guys, I think that's uh, basically gonna do it. We'll wrap up the video here. You know, I feel a little bit, uh, not de defeated, but uh, I feel like we didn't sort of achieve much uh, in this episode. Uh, we are making progress though, so uh, in the next episode we'll finish up this Bondo work. Uh, we'll get that going. I'll figure out what I'm going to do paint-wise. Uh, I've got the codes. I need to get a HVLP sprayer and uh, paint, and uh, I think I'm going to have to get a, or rent or borrow maybe, a larger uh, capacity uh, air compressor for the, uh, the HVLP gun, because that's spray gun, paint gun. I've never done that before, so yeah, we're making progress, so uh, yeah, I think that'll about do it. Thank you for all the likes, the comments, uh, everyone that's subscribed. If you haven't already done so, please do so now. Uh, you know, if you <laughs> enjoy watching me uh, bondo and sand and all that kind of stuff, plus the electronics, uh, there's a lot of that here. So uh, subscribe so you don't miss anything. But uh, yeah, thanks for all the great feedback and support. Uh, I'll wrap it up here. Uh, as always, I'm Charlie. Thanks for watching Overtime Arcade, and we'll see you next time. Oh, 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 overtime!